Hey, thanks for joining me. Often when I'm out and about, I like to carry both film and digital cameras. I like to do that in a compact camera bag, have a few extra lenses to make a versatile kit. This is how I do this. Let me uh, show you what's in here. Before we get started, if you would, click on the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content, and let's get started. Okay, in a previous video, I talked about one of my EDC film cameras was this Kodak Retina 2A. It's a great little camera, got uh, great image quality, a fairly fast lens, and I really like this camera. It's compact, but it, it doesn't have interchangeable lenses, so it's kind of limited in terms of that versatility. So I decided to go with something a little bit different. So in this camera bag, this is an old uh, Tamrac digital bag. Actually, I get it close to the camera. It looks giant, but it's really, if I hold it back here by me, it's, it's pretty compact. And this will hold two camera bodies and a couple extra lenses, some other accessories, and uh, it's a good size bag to carry around. I actually found this bag, out of all places, at a thrift store. Got it really cheap. I know Tamarack doesn't make this bag anymore, uh, but I know there's a lot of similar bags you can get of similar size. And so let's take a look here. Now, the, the film camera that I switched to is this 1956 Canon L2. Now, the Canon L2 is a Leica thread mount camera body. You can't really call it a Leica copy. The Canon L2 is, um, you know, accepts Leica lenses, but it's, um, it's quite different from a you know, conventional Leica screw mount camera. This actually has a hinged back. I'm not going to open this up because it's got film in it right now. Whereas the Leica screw mount cameras, you had to basically stuff the film in from the bottom. You took the bottom off and the film went in from the bottom. This has a hinged back. The L2 is a, kind of a, a budget line camera that Canon used to make. So it's, some of its features are a little bit limited. It only, the top shutter speed is only a 500th of a second. Um, and it doesn't have a, a self timer, you know, so it's, it's a kind of a plain Jane model, but it's really fit the needs, you know, the needs that I have. So this does have a viewfinder that works with 35 or 50 millimeter cameras. You can kind of see that there. There's a dial here, a little roller you can turn right above, right next to the viewfinder. And it changes from 35 to 50. Of course, you can change your shutter speeds up here. The, the higher speeds, the slow speeds, like a Leica screw mount, are done on this front dial. Uh, the lens I have on this is a lens I've talked about in some previous videos. It's a 35 millimeter F35 Lights Sumeron that I rescued from an aircraft gun camera. It was a Vietnam era aircraft gun camera. And uh, I have a video about this lens, uh, kind of a review of it, as well as a video about that aircraft gun camera. I'll link those in the description down below. This is a great lens. I actually got a really good deal on it. Um, I got this camera off of um, you know online auction and uh, came from Japan. I only paid $68 for the camera body and um, you know, then about another $25 or $30 for shipping. So the whole thing was a little less than $100. And so that's pretty affordable. This lens, I only, um, I think I paid, what, $60 or something like that for this lens. I, I don't really have much in this either. So kind of a very inexpensive setup. I was kind of lucky to find all these pieces like this. But this, uh, this camera with the 35 millimeter viewfinder on it then gives me a good home for this lens. So I really like that setup. And... If you haven't ever used a, a rangefinder camera like a Leica or some one of these Canons, they're just a joy to use. You can focus real fast and work real fast with them. It, um, you know, the Leica cameras became kind of the standard for a lot of photojournalists. And a lot of that was because, number one, they're, they're kind of inconspicuous, they're quiet. But you can, with a rangefinder, you can actually focus and work very fast. So that's a, why a lot of photojournalists use these, not, you know, Obviously, the image quality of the Leica lenses and even the Canon lenses is um, really extraordinary. So, the uh, the camera is um, you know it's it's a very fast working camera. You can you can uh, focus and take pictures you know on the fly pretty quickly. Now, one of the lenses I use with this is an old Chiyoko Super Rokor 45 millimeter f 2.8. This is actually a lens. I've got it on the adapter here, but this is the lens that was came on originally on a Minolta 35, another Leica screw mount 
kind of camera that Minolta made. Minolta made a, a line of rangefinder cameras with a Leica thread mount starting in 1947, I think it was, and continued on into the um, late 50s, maybe the early 60s. This lens is probably from the mid 50s. It's about the same age as that Canon camera. Um, but 45 millimeter f2.8, it's uh, five elements in three groups. And I would consider the formula on this to be something of a modified Tesser prescription. And the Tesser has four elements in three groups. There's two cemented elements at the front and then two air spaced elements behind it. Uh, this has actually three elements cemented together in the front and then two air spaced elements, you know, going back towards the film. And so it's, uh, they, th what I think that Minolta was trying to do is improve on the Tesser. But what they did is create a lens that's super sharp, got great image quality, and uh, this lens is just beautifully made. It's nickel plated brass. It's, it's kind of heavy for its size. Beautifully made. Got a little focusing tab here where you can, you can focus or you can grab this scalloped focusing ring. It almost looks like a gear. I mean, it's really beautifully machined. The apertures are labeled on both sides of the aperture ring so no matter where you have this lens turned as you focus it you can easily get to your aperture settings apertures are changed by just turning this front ring there's no clicks uh, but it turns nice and smooth and uh, so this is a the great lens and like i said i have an adapter for this because the digital camera that i carry around and this should be no stranger to you if you've been watching my videos is my ep5 and i carry with this the lumix 20 millimeter f1.7 pancake lens it's got some good speed super super sharp the the ep5 and and i've got some videos about it i'll link those also down below this is i believe going to be in the history of digital cameras this will be a classic uh, it's got just a lot of great features and very versatile camera compact same kind of size you know as as a rangefinder camera and that's kind of one of the appeals to me and so I have this adapter. I can put either the 35 millimeter Sumer on that's on this camera, or I can put this 45 millimeter Chioka uh, lens on, um, on that adapter and use them on the EP5. Now, one of the things about the EP5 is that it has focus peaking. That allows me to focus very quickly using vintage lenses. And so this, this increases having an interchangeable lens film camera with some extra lenses increases the versatility of my kit now so i have a 20 millimeter which is very slightly wide um, on micro four thirds i can i can put on this um, 35 millimeter sumer on from this and i have uh, the equivalent of a 70 millimeter lens so some uh, short telephoto i can put this 45 on there and have an equivalent of a 90 millimeter lens which would be a good like portrait length slightly longer and i also carry Another lens that I've done some videos on, and I'll link those also, but I have in this neat little orange bag here, I have the SLR Magic 8mm f4 um, super wide angle lens. This is a, a great lens. Like I say, I've done some videos on it. 8mm, which is equivalent to a 16mm lens in full frame. Super wide lens for micro four thirds. These are quite a bargain. Now, back when I bought this, you could get them for about $150. Last time I looked on B&H Photo, they were closer to three or maybe over $300. You know, so you have to just shop and see what you can find them for. I've seen them on Amazon. Sometimes you can get a good deal on them. But this is a, a pretty inexpensive for an eight millimeter wide angle lens. Um, pretty sharp. It's not as good as some more expensive lenses, but at the edges, but in the center, it's beautifully sharp. And even at the edges, you know, if you stop it down to f5.6, maybe f8, it's got decent image quality on the edges too. I really like the lens. The, the price was very affordable and the image quality is good and it's nice and compact. So that's, that's my um, super wide angle lens for my micro four thirds. So I can, between these two cameras, you know, I, the, the film camera, I've got a 35, which is slightly wide and the, the 45, which is a normal lens. And then on the, the digital camera, I've got the eight millimeter, which is super wide. I've got the 20, which is very slightly wide. I can adapt either one of the film camera lenses to it and have a, a short telephoto and a very slightly longer telephoto. You know, both those are kind of in the short telephoto range. One of the lenses I want to add to this kit 
Um, Canon used to make a 100 millimeter F35 like a screw mount lens that had just amazing image quality. And I had one at one time. Um, I used to shoot Leicas quite a bit, rangefinders, and uh, the 90 millimeter lens I had for my Leicas was a, a Lights 90 millimeter um, F2.8 Tele Elmerit, which is a great lens, uh, super image quality. It was it was wonderful. But uh, I just moved into a, a house that I'd bought. It wasn't a brand new house, an older house, and the sewer line collapsed, and so I had to pay for that sewer line to be replaced. And that Lights Tele Elmerit basically sold it and paid for the sewer line. Um, Leica lenses, you know, obviously sometimes go for quite a bit of money. So I, I got this uh, at a camera show. I bought the Canon 100 millimeter f3.5. It was more compact, um, pretty lightweight, and at f3.5 only a you know what is that like a third of a stop slower than f2.8. So you know not that much difference in speed, and the image quality was actually better than the lights uh, teleomerate. It was amazing. Uh, some of the pictures I shot with it, I couldn't believe how sharp they were. They were just fantastic. So that's a lens I'm gonna kind of be looking around for to find a good deal on one. And so I can add that to the kit. Again, if I can find one of those, um, you know, that could be adapted to the digital camera, the EP5 with an adapter and I have an equivalent of a 200 millimeter lens. So that'd be a really versatile kit. Um, so that, that's kind of my, my, um, my carry around kit. This little bag is like I say, it's, it looks kind of big when I get it close to the camera. If you put it back by me, it's not so big. But this camera is, um, this bag is, you know, it's got room for the two bodies and some lenses down one side. It's got an internal pouch here, or a zipper pouch. I keep a um, light meter in here. This is an old Gossen Pilot. And uh, amazingly, I'm not sure exactly the age of this, probably from the 50s or 60s. It's still very accurate and uh, probably has to do with the fact that it's in this case in the photo cell has not been exposed to light continuously because it's covered. But the um, little case is really great. The um, meter is accurate and, you know, I can use the meter from the digital camera or I can use a meter, you know, an app on my phone and meter, but it's sometimes it's just more convenient to use an actual light meter. And so I keep that light meter. Uh, there's a pouch on the front of this that has on the front of the flap that uh, I keep a lens hood for a couple of lenses. This one's for the the Lumix lens and then a lens hood that this works actually um, with both the um, 35 millimeter F35 Sumeron or that 45 millimeter F28 uh, Super Rocor. Uh, it works for either one of those. So I, I like to use a lens hood, especially on vintage lenses. It, it helps control flare. And uh, you know, there's a, a front pouch on this that I can keep some film in. And um, you know, so I can keep extra rolls of film. I've got some extra batteries in here for my digital camera, and there's a flap here for extra memory cards. So it's a neat little bag. I was really lucky to find it. Like I say, I got it. I found it at a thrift store. Back when I found it, it was it looked like it was brand new. It um, it has uh, been a really good bag. I've been carrying it for quite a while, but it uh, at some point this thing will wear out, and I'll have to replace it, and it'll be hard to it'll be hard to come up with a good replacement for it. Okay, so that's my film and digital kit using the Canon L2 and the Olympus EP5 in a kit that gives me some versatility. I can carry both film and digital. You know, sometimes I want to shoot something and I want a film look, and sometimes, you know, I want the, the image quality that you get from digital. This is kind of a versatile kit that gives me both. If I'm out and about, you know, maybe at a museum or maybe just, you know, out sightseeing or traveling or whatever. I just want that kind of versatility that really works for me. So that's kind of my current, um, you know, go-to compact, versatile film and digital kit that I carry around. And it, uh, it it's working well for me. Like I say, I'm probably going to add a, a little bit longer lens, like a hundred millimeter lens, just to uh, give me a little bit more reach. That would give me the hundred millimeter on full frame, the film camera, and then a, basically equivalent to a 200 millimeter on the digital. And, and that's one of the great things about carrying both film and digital when you use a mirrorless camera is that you can carry these adapters and I only have to carry this one adapter because you know, obviously all the lenses that I'm adapting are like a screw mount. But this is a um, inexpensive, you know, you can get these on eBay. This brand is Photosy and um, you can get these on eBay for 
you know, anywhere 10 to $20. They're very inexpensive and they work quite well. You can screw the, you know, the Leica thread mount lenses on them and then, you know, they'll bayonet right onto your mirrorless camera. And, you know, it uh, just allows me to have the versatility of using the lenses that go with the film camera on the digital camera. The uh, EP5, like I say, has great focus peaking. So focus is not a problem. And, you know, I grew up using film cameras that were manual focused, so manually focusing a camera to me, it's just not a big deal. I know that may be a bit more of a challenge for someone that's used to autofocus on everything, but uh, for me it works quite well, and uh, it's a real versatile kit. So <clears throat> these, um, these cameras are just, um, just the, right, the right fit for me in this kind of a kit. Anyway, that's, um, that's kind of my outfit. This um, L2 and the EP5 make just for a real versatile compact kit for everyday, you know, carrying around and, and uh, travel and that kind of photography. Anyway, if you have any thoughts or comments, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I always love hearing from you. And as always, thanks for watching.